these are the four things we need to address in CFA. Factor loadings, we need to check to make sure all factor loadings are greater than 0.5 and we prefer actually greater than 0.7 but 0.5 is okay too. Then we need to assess the model fit, then we improve the model fit uh, by re-specifying the model and then we assess the reliability and validity of the measurement. So this is our model that we uh, um, developed following our research model and this is the CFA model. Now the first step is to check the standardized factor loadings. So we got the results and we are on standardized factor loadings. I may zoom in a bit to just see whether there is any uh, factor, any item with factor loading of less than 0 0.5. Here it seems everything is fine. So if you could not see them clearly, you can use this <laughs> magnifier. And here I see one 0 0.2 factor loading is and one here is 0 0.22 I'm not sure which factor which item has a factor loading of 0 0.22 so what I do is I click on move parameters to find the one yeah here so you see now it's red so 0 0.22 and I can move it right so it's attached to intention 5 and here it's attached to although it's on attitude 5 because there's no space so it's for in attitude six. So by move parameter, you can find out which one. You can even uh, put it in the place that you want. So um, we start with removing the weakest one, which is attitude six. But there's another way to check the factor loadings too, especially when your model is very big. You can click on view text. View text will give you the report for the report of the results and here is a summary of the results um, these um, are those that you requested you remember in the answers properties uh, we selected some of the things that we wanted and i told you if you don't remember later which one to select select all of them maybe i can show it to you now here again so this uh, these options so the report is just given for the options you selected if you select all of them you will just have a longer report and um so assessment for normality, um, yeah, of course, we discussed this before. And as you can see, the critical ratios shows that most of them, yeah, except just maybe this one and maybe a few here, uh, at least for, yeah, let me see. Yeah, for skewness, most of them are significantly different from norms, they deviate significantly, the distribution deviates from normal distribution, but it seems for cortices it's not that bad, right? Just a few of them and some of them very, very far from normality. Uh, but we, the most important thing is multivariate normality and even multivariate normality is not good. We discussed this before and I said that we can, there are some options, for example, you can use bootstrapping, the one that I use always. But here, um, let's just work on the CFA part. It's not about uh, normality assessment, but this is one of the an observation. So these are the outliers, you see. Uh, we, if you want to delete, you start from the one with the largest uh, Molon obesity squared value. And we discuss all this. But what we need now is factor loading. So just go to factor, click on estimates. It gives you different options, uh, scholars, regression weights. Here we don't have any, uh, path from between the constructs but we have all these paths between the construct and its items it means uh, when we call them uh, and these and the path coefficients are called factor loadings right so by um, regression weights these are on a standard factor loadings and their p-value whether they are significant so as you can see all of them are significant so very good because they should be otherwise we remove them and then standardized regression weights Actually, if the factor loading is greater than 0 0.5, it will be significant. And here you easily can find out those standardized regression weights, means those factor loadings are with the value of less than 0 0.5. And here there is intention 5. And we have one more here. Where is it? Attitude 6. Okay. Attitude 6 and intention 5. But attitude six is more is weaker. So let's start with 
uh, removing attitude six. And of course, you get the covariance correlations. So covariance is the unstandardized value. Correlation is the standardized value of the covariances. And it's the correlation between the factors. So uh, these correlations here, right? Um, so they va the value varies between minus one to positive one. And zero means no correlation at all. And uh, when it's, uh, the absolute value is larger, this means it's uh, they are more similar, the behavior is more similar, the changes, the variance, uh, the changes in the variance is more similar. So uh, anyway, again, let's just go back to the standardized factor loadings and remove the weakest one, which is attitude six. So I close this, I don't need it anymore. I just, okay, now you see, I cannot make any changes in the model because I'm in the output uh, mode. I'm in the output, um, I'm viewing the output of the results. And you cannot make changes in the model. To, so the, when, when the red button is selected here, you just see the results. And if you want to make changes, you need to go back to the input uh, mode. Means you need to click on this one, on the gray one. So you now all are available, right? So I delete attitude six, right? I forgot. Attitude six. Okay. Can I run the model again? We should run to see the results again. But uh, let me show you something. Okay, I run the model, so I just click on the calculate estimates. And I didn't get the red button, why? You remember I said when you don't get red button, there is something wrong, you need to check. The reason is because I removed the item we, that we fixed the, it's loading at one. So now there is no fact, no item with a factor loading of one. So what we need to do is we need to fix another one at one. This is model identification. You see, I just double click on one of them, any of them, and then go to objective properties, parameters tab, and here write one and then close. So now again, I fix one of them at one. So I run the model again, calculate, estimates. Hurrah, now we get, now we got the results. So we do, we click on the output mode, standardize estimates, and now we check whether there is any other factor loading of less than 0 0.5, and it seems there is one, the one that we already identified. We don't remove all in one shot. We do it one by one, because they may, I mean, the changes may impact other factor loadings. And here, intention five is the one with problem. So I just deactivate this. I go back here to the input mode. I delete intention five. Okay, I did. I still have the one with which is fixed at one. So I should be able to run the model again. So I click on calculate estimate, and I check the factor loadings again. There shouldn't be any problem. Oh, I view the results and yep. If you if you check, you see there is no more factor loading issue so that is good this means the items have been loaded uh, um, I mean the factor loadings are strong enough and now what is the next step the next step is assess the model fit how to assess the model fit just click on the view text and here there is something sorry <laughs> Model fit. So here you can see the model fit. This is a report of model fit. You remember I said the first um, table is the chi-square value. So chi-square is 1491 degree of freedom, p-value, and chi-square per degree of freedom. Um, so for chi-square, we expect non-significant chi-square. I mean, non-significant chi-squares show that the model fit is good. But here p-value is less than 0.05. This means it is significant. This means that the uh, results show that the model, the observed, the, hy the hypothesized model significantly uh, deviates from the observed model. And this is not what we want. So the results are not good. But I told you already, this is, this is most probably because of the sample size. I mean, when you have a large sample size here, we have 300 samples, 301 samples. So these samples, the sample size impacts the p-value. So you will get 
significant results even if your model is good. This is a problem of chi-square. So um, don't worry, um, this doesn't mean really that your model is not good, but we report chi-square degree of freedom and its p-value because um, it's used to compare between the models. Now, chi-square per degree of freedom, um, it's a measure that we usually use, I usually report, and it's good because um, the value is yeah, 2.6 considered good. Um, GFI, we expect greater than 0 0.9. All these here, we expect greater than 0 0.9. Um, Ramsey, we expect less than 0 0.08. Now you may ask how to know which one to report or how many we should report and these type of questions. So, um, this is the summary i mean do yeah it is the summary a summary of the references you can use and the recommended values for the uh, indexes and um, these are those that are used um, they are the most commonly used indexes chi square of course we expect p value grade greater than 0 0.05 but yeah because of the sample size usually it's not achieved uh, chi square per degree of freedom any value great less than zero less than five is good is okay acceptable less than zero less than three is good and here it's good less than three less than five and even less than three is good gfi should be greater than 0 0.9 cfi and ramsey so i have provided a list of uh you know those uh, values that we check and the threshold we accept uh, but what to report? There are different opinions, there are different uh, guidelines you may follow. For example, uh, uh, one suggests that Jacquard and one 1996, they suggest that um, reporting at least three feet test, one absolute, one relative, and one parsimonious to reflect, um, to assess the right, to the assess the model feed. Klein um, recommend feed measures without reference to their classification means doesn't mean you must report from all these three groups of indexes. Uh, Mayer has different opinion. He, Mayer and his colleagues, they have different opinion. Reporting chi-square, NFI, CFI, Ramsey. And now, what is my personal experience after publishing papers using structure cushion modeling? So this is a book that I have published and it's uh, now a main textbook in some public universities in my hometown, I mean in, country, in my country, Iran. Uh, unfortunately, the book is in Persian language. So it's uh, for years, I'm, every year I, just, I say, okay, this is my uh, my plan is here to translate it, but so far no success. If there is anyone, any Iranian here who wants to translate this book into English, please let me know. But anyway, you can cite this book if you want, because this is I, what I'm sharing. This workshop is all based on my um, experience, and I have referred to many uh, main textbooks, many papers in my book. Um, so. Easily you can cite this book and my suggestion is how to report. Report chi-square, its degree of freedom and p-value even if it's not good, even if it shows it, the model field is not good. So report them, okay? Report chi-square, its degree of freedom and p-value. And then report uh, two or three incremental fit indices like or and GFI. So report GF, GFI in some cases is not good. GFI in some cases is not good. Uh, but report uh, two or three of these FIs, right? I mean, this GFI and these, all these that have been provided in the uh, third table. NFI, RFI, IFI, TLI, CFI. And then report Ramsey. Ramsey is very important and should be reported here, Ramsey. You remember, we read the first line. We discussed this before. Hope you have not missed that video. We refer to the first line. The first line in the tables is your model fit and srmr also it's good to be reported here i mentioned less than 0 0.09 but here i mentioned 0 0.08 both are fine right they are different this is what i provide in my text by thing but anyway so 0 0.09 0 0.08 is good so let's count so as long as so what i'm saying is as long as you have um 
you have just two three here and Ramsey that's fine so what I'm suggesting it's good to have more fit indexes that support your model but as long as you have let's say three fit indexes um, like CFI, NFI and GFI if it's good report it's very important but in most cases in some cases you cannot achieve Ramsey you must report and SRMR it's good to be reported if it's X if it's in the range so um, let's count to see whether we get three of these FIs um, okay first of all chi-square is not good chi-square per degree of freedom is good yeah here is less than five uh, GFI is not good here none of them are good and uh, Ramsey is good now you may ask me what about SRMR actually SRMR is not reported here there is a plugin is already by default in your Amos so ah here standardized RMR so when you click you get the table then you just run the model and you get the results it's a 0 0.05 and it is good so so far let's say we have okay where is the results we have model fits here yeah, model fit. one and two and three is SRMR so we have three indexes but here we need a few right we still have not achieved two or three of the uh, uh, we have uh, what's called <laughs> the model fit indexes here so what you need to do to improve the model how to improve the model there is something here modification indices you see you click here then you get a list of improvements suggested by Amos software oh it's a long list right it's a long list so um, this value okay first what is this column it show it's suggesting covariate with uh, these two op items in those these two objects in your model it's suggesting covariate e35 to output quality it's suggesting to cut and then if you do then your chi-square will improve 4.8 points and then E35 to E36 will improve your chi-square by 4.7. Do you remember chi-square is the measure to as this the main measure to assess the model fit? But as I said, you don't usually get results. But at the end, we want to reduce the chi-square. If you reduce the chi-square, other model fit indexes should improve as well. So how? To, so if if we prefer smaller chi-squares, as we prefer smaller chi-squares, so which one we should choose first? The largest one because the largest value means it uh, for example here 44 this means or 83 83 means if you connect if you if you covariate e31 to e32 you can reduce the chi-square by 83.9 points so you will get smaller chi-square which means better model fit but so which one is the largest one it's a long list right so what they can do is in the analysis properties there is one uh, item here modification in this is this is the thing I just showed you here by default is 4 I just change it to 30 it won't impact your results it's just a matter of reporting so when I click close and run the model again if I go to analysis to view output here model uh, sorry modification in this is you see now the list is shorter why because it will only show you the improvements that can uh, the suggestions that can improve chi-square at least by 30 points so those smaller have been removed so it's just a matter of reporting right won't impact your reason now you may ask okay what value to choose I don't know up to you I mean just shorter it just shortened the, re the report right so it makes it easier to identify the largest ones um, so the largest one is 93.6 so it's suggesting Connect E10, covariate E10 to E11. E10 is here, error 10. E10 to E11, it's just covarianting them. But can we do it? You remember, I told you that um, you cannot just blindly follow whatever suggested by Amos to you. You need to have theoretical justification. It should make sense. It should make sense. So now you may say, how do I know that it makes sense? 
Don't worry about it. There is something that makes life easier. This I borrowed from James uh, website. So as you can see here, as long as you are covariating in CFA, as long as you are covariating error terms in the same construct, you are fine. So this is acceptable because you are covariating two error terms in the same construct. The same here for factor two. You are covariating two error terms for the items in the same construct. For example, this one is not acceptable because you are covariating error term of one item in one construct to the error term in another construct. Here the same. You are covariating an error term to a construct, to a factor, to a construct. Here again, you are, you are not allowed to draw a path in CFA. So what you are allowed is only to covariate error terms of the items in the same construct. Let's go back here. The suggestion is based on the what you see here. We need to covariate e10 to e11. Are we allowed? We need to see whether they are in the same constructs. e10, e11. Both of them are on their image, so we can covariate e10 and e11. So I just select the covariate and e10 to e11. Just draw. From here to here. So done. Now we run the model again. We check the model fit. And the model fit. It has improved. Now they are closer to 0 0.9. But still, Ramsey is still good. But still, we have not reached to 0 0.9. So we continue. Modification in this is. One more, 86 is the largest one, E31 to E32, E31 to E32, where is it? Here. And both are the error terms of intention construct, so we can covariate them. Done, right? Now, um... Let's run the model again. Model fit. Oh guys, this is very close to 0 0.9, 899. And GFI has improved, others have improved. This has reduced, which is good. Ramsey has reduced, which is good. So we continue. Let's go for the next one. E20 to E21. E20 to E21, here. Oh, both are in the same construct. So let's follow the advice, E20 to E21. Then I run the model again. Hopefully this time we make it. Yes, we made it. IFI is greater than 0 0.9. CFI is greater than 0 0.9. Okay, done. So we have one here. Chi square per degree of freedom is less than three or less than five. CFI is good. IFI is good. Others not really. Then Ramsey is good and SRMR should be good because it has it should have improved, right? So I go for standardized RMR. You run the model and yeah, it's good. Still less than 0 0.08. Okay, so but. Um, But I will continue one more, one more time. I will do it one more time because TLI also is very close to 0 0.9. So modification in this is still there is in the list. So if the if for example there was nothing here, this means you need to change this change. Oh sorry, yeah. Output. You need to change this, right? So I mean, if there was nothing there, then reduce it. It means report all that improve a model fit by 20, at least 20. Uh, units, then you get higher, no, so more suggestions. You see, now there are more. Uh, so the next one, E1 to E2, I believe we can because they should be under the same construct. Yes, I covariate them, I run the model again. And yep. IFI, TLI, CFI, three good indexes. 
three good um, signs. <laughs> And chi square per degree of freedom is 2, is reduced to 2, and Ramsey is even less than 0 0.06 now, and well done. So your model fit is good, and you can report the model fit now. If you want, you can continue, but um, if, you, if too many of error terms have been covariated, you are reducing the generalizability of the findings, right? generalizability of your model right so be careful we don't want to we don't if you covariate all of them the model fit will be perfect so we don't want to covariate too many of them there is uh, no rule that i tell you how many should be covariated just try to improve your model fit but sometimes with covariating the model fit is not improved significantly maybe you need to use other methods for example another method is Here, residuals. So you check the standardized residuals, and yeah, you check the standardized residuals, and um, if there is any item with so many, you know, values greater than four, remove it. Remove the item. Remove the question. Where is it? I show you. Here, mod. Uh, so estimates, matrices, and standardized residual covariances. So those, so these are critical ratios. Means anything greater than 1.96 significant. But we check for any value greater than four. But here we don't. I don't see any issue. But uh, for those cases that you see, for example, for attitude one, there are so many four, six, ten, twelve. Then dr drop it. Absolute value. Their absolute value, right? So that drop attitude one then. If there are too many, um, I mean, uh, there are several cases that are greater than four. This means these items significant. There is a significant, uh, um, let's say, yeah. Uh, for this item, the um, model is significantly different from the uh, observed model, hypothesized model and observed model. Yeah. Anyway. So um, this means you should drop it. Then you drop and the model fit will improve. So this is another technique you may check as well. But okay, anyway, for us so far, it's okay. The model fit is okay and I'm happy about the results. So what we do is I already saved this um, as CFA fit because we need, to, um, yeah. So CFA underlying fit.